Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Star Trek Fleet Command. So, it's about that time that I renew a video on dual factions. I've talked with so many people on so many different other teams about running dual factions or not. And I see so many mistakes being made. So... I just wanted to make another video for where my factions are updated, the reasons I run dual factions, and the reasons why I think you should run dual factions. So let's start off with the number one grievance a lot of people have. I'm way too far negative in my faction. There's nothing I can do to get positive in, in two factions. And keep in mind, it's, it's going to seem like a very daunting task, especially if you are negative more than 100,000. If you are negative more than 100,000, there is definitely going to be a lot of work you're going to need to do, but it's going to pay off so much in the long term of this game. And I'll explain that shortly here. So I would say even if you're negative, you know, 500,000, it's going to be a grind, but it's going to be worth it in, in the long term. The unfortunate, unfortunate part about being very negative in another faction is your dailies. So let's say, for instance, you're positive in Federation, but you're negative 250k in Romulan and 500,000 in, in Klingon. You have to stop collecting those Federation dailies because... Just to give you guys an idea of what I mean. So if we take a look at this, every time I collect this this Federation faction daily, once I complete it, it's hurting my Romulan and my Klingon. So if you're in this situation and, and you're doing this Federation daily and you're trying to work on your Romulan points, it's counterintuitive for you to collect that daily. You need to find a way to, to bring up that, that Romulan points. And you can't do it by collecting dailies. So that is the bullet you're going to have to bite on for a little bit. All you got to do is get 500 points and you will get faction dailies for the faction. The nice thing is what they've changed, and this will be really great for new players coming into the game, and this is a really great video for new players in general, is I also hear that, that question is, okay, I'm level 14, what faction should I choose? Well, for one, it's not one that you necessarily have to worry about, but for two, make sure you make a very sound decision on what you're going to do to save yourself the headache of having to backstep your factions and figure out what you're going to fix. And I think it's also important to know what each faction represents and what, what is important about it. And, and I'll explain that shortly here. So... The other nice thing about the factions is they have added these reputation events. And mine are going to be really high because I'm over one and a half million in Federation. But it is going to allow you just by spending resources on building upgrades, uh, research upgrades, even alliance donations, that you're going to be able to earn favor for your faction. And as you can see, once again... If you're trying to get positive in Romulan or Klingon and you're running a Federation faction and you have this, you can't collect that at all. So you just don't even enroll into it for the day because you have to sign up for it every day in order for it to take effect. So that is, that is the biggest downside to it. And what I can say is that if you want to not be hit by that for so long, you're going to have to grind out ships really fast like hundreds of ships a day and it's definitely going to cost your resources try to target faction ships that have tritanium or dilithium so that you can reabsorb some of that cost you're going to be putting out so the benefit for it is let's just start with 
resources. So, as we know, there are several systems that are neutral where you can get ore. Everybody goes to those systems because a lot of people are hostile with Romulans. And the ore is in Romulan space. So, if your Federation... And you have no problem getting gas. You get it all day long. You go and mine it in Federation space. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to to fly freely through Romulan space and mine there? That is one of the biggest advantages. The other advantage, too, is the dailies. The dailies are going to reward you twice as much of those G3 materials if you are running to two different factions. And that is, that is such a huge benefit because it, instead of mining so much, you can just do your dailies and get twice as much of G3. Along with G3 is you get faction pack credits. You get faction store credits. You get the faction points as well. So instead of just getting that for one faction, you can double that up. Another point is the officers. Okay. So... A lot of people, they want, they're, they're running Federation and they want Gorkin. They really want a really good Gorkin setup on their Interceptor. Well, they can't go into their faction store and get Klingon crew. And so I'm in this boat. I can't get Klingon crew. I have some Klingon credits somehow. <laughs> and I'm just going to have to be lucky enough to pull him and regular crew packs. But if you're running dual factions, you can easily buy buy these crew packs in that faction store and get to the point where you have those crew members. Another thing about crew is once they get up to a certain point, you're going to need faction credits to tier up that specific crew member as well. And this isn't so much of... A detriment to running a single faction because you can still do like your federation and you need some Klingon credits you can run some Klingon missions to get those credits but I think you kind of see at the end of the day what is going to be needed to to basically get the crews that you want the other thing too is the ships um. so faction ships are really important and so what i did as most of you know i just bought a centurion i had grinded up about 12,000 12,000 romulan credits i spent some money to get 8,000 credits and i unlocked my centurion okay if i was only running one faction then I would only be able to get that one ship, but check this out. I'm at 11,400 Federation credits. And keep in mind, I've spent a lot on crew for, for the feds because I really wanted to get Kirk and tear him up. So I would have been higher if I wouldn't have done that. But now, let me show you this. For the Antares. The Antares costs 15,000 credits. And you need a level 30 shipyard to get this miner. And as you can see, I'm well on my way. I'm level just hit level 29, working on that 29 shipyard. I'm going to be getting up to level 30 as soon as possible. <clears throat> but by the time I get that, it's going to be a free ship for me. So every time you do those dailies for those dual factions, you're going to be able to get two free faction ships keep in mind it is going to take a lot of grinding and you're going to have to get your your shipyard up to a certain point to build those but if you are a free-to-play player it is so worth it in my opinion to make sure that you are running dual factions and a lot of people will will say you know what i can't do it i can't do it it's it's whatever <clears throat> you're doing yourself a very big detriment to that um, the, the, another thing is having the flexibility of floating through space. Like if your alliance decides to set up a, a hive in Romulan space and you're hostile there, it won't really work for you. 
<clears throat> um, if you guys are trying to do something in a certain part of a specific faction, I've heard that so many times. Oh, I can't go there. Um, so just keep these things in mind and keep working on your factions. I, my, my Federation faction is getting a little too high for me right now because it's having me hit level 33 ships to do my dailies, which is, is kind of a pain right now, but I cannot stress to everyone watching this video to run those dual factions. You will do yourself such a favor in the long run. And you can still grind out the enemy faction blueprints, but it is going to take approximately 30,000 level 30 faction ships to grind out enough blueprints to get a faction ship. So we had a player on the on this server just recently do that. And um, I did ask him for his opinion on that. And he said it did take about 30,000 ships that were level 30 or higher. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you're, if you're thinking of saying, you know, oh, I can just run one faction and I'll just grind out those blueprints. Keep in mind how much that's going to take. So <clears throat> any other questions about dual factions? Make sure to post them down below. Uh, any questions you have, definitely post down below. Click like and subscribe on this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Be kind to one another, and I will talk to you later.